Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a new ink from Dimine. It is this ink, Writer's Blood. This was this year's uh, Reddit community voted ink uh, after Earl Grey and the beautiful Aurora Borealis in previous years. Uh, this is this year's. It's a beautiful sort of dark burgundy red, red wine sort of, sort of ish color. Uh, a little bit of sheen there. And uh, this is just regular card stock, uh, but it looks really great. We're going to look at it on a couple of different kinds of paper, uh, show a couple of tests, and away we will go. So I have it here in the regular Diamine 80ml bottle. It's a glass bottle, good size opening, great amount of ink, super affordable. Uh, the ink also comes in a smaller bottle like this. This is not writer's blood, obviously, uh, but in this style of bottle. Uh, as I said, amazing value. These bottles are a little harder to fill from, uh, but the price you pay for the amount of ink you get with Dime Mine is pretty great, and they're generally fairly good inks. Let's look at this one in particular. Here it is on Tomoa River paper. This is the 68 GSM. This is in a Bond Travel Gear notebook, which isn't made anymore, but great 68 GSM Tomoa River paper. So writer's blood ink, I had it in two pens. Firstly, the Y Studio portable fountain pen with a medium nib, uh, which is quite wet. And then the standard Twisby Go with an extra fine nib. The five points for this ink. Firstly, I put Reddit. So this, as I said, was a voted color name situation with the reddit community um the reddit community if you're not familiar with it is a a group of fountain pen lovers a huge group from all around the world who participate in conversations and sharing things on the um i suppose it's a social media platform in a way reddit um i'll put the uh the link in the box down below um uh, but it's a really interesting group to be uh involved in and they voted on this ink and i think they've really nailed it this year Second point is the saturation. It is a highly saturated, beautiful ink. As I said, you do get a little bit um, of sheen, as you can see on that card there, greeny gold sheen, which is nice. Um, I think it's got an interesting water resistance. Uh, it moves, because it is a saturated ink, it moves the ink around a bit, so you could use this for artwork and things like that. Uh, but a little bit does sort of stay behind. You can definitely make out what was written there uh, and there's a sort of a, a gray purple that is held at the bottom of the ink there. Fourth point uh, is that it has a fairly wet blow, which is really good in a dry pen and in a wetter pen, like something like this uh, Y Studio pen, you get a lot of ink down on the page, which does allow for some interesting sort of sheen and things like that to come through. And then finally, the color. I love this color. This sort of almost red wine burgundy color I find to be really attractive. I don't call this a red or even a blood red uh, ink color. I think it's more purple than that. Uh, certainly more uh, maroon or uh, as I said, burgundy, definitely. But you know, a really nice, interesting color. Uh, let's talk performance. It's a lovely color with a great feel on the page. That wetness and that flow makes this a really lovely writing experience. It's got fairly standard bleed and feather on low-end paper. Dye mine inks generally perform fairly well, but on low-end paper, particularly in ink of this saturation, you are going to get a little bleed and feather. As I said, some are water resistance. You can definitely still make that out. Extras, uh, shading. And particularly, actually, in the dry pen, if we look up close there on the writing sample, you can see that in the extra fine, you get a bit more shading than in the nice wet medium. Um, so, yeah, dry pens will give you a little bit more shading. There is some sheen to be had, not a whole lot in writing. Uh, once again, if it's a wet pen on good paper, you can get it. Uh, and there's not a shimmer ink. Uh, let's have a, so I showed the water resistance there, it moves around, but you can get a little bit left behind. And that uh, is paralleled here in the chromatography. You get a really strong gray line held behind, and then lots of gray pulls through into sort of that burgundy, and then pinks and reds, which gives this a lot of, uh, this color a lot of depth. I have it here on Rhodia. Uh, you can see that the color and that shading looks really great on this paper. Uh, there's no feathering that you can see on that side. Uh, and I think the swatch shows just how saturated this ink really is. Uh, and certainly also sort of how wet the flow is. If we look at the reverse of that, nothing from the writing at all, at all has come through, even where I laid down sort of a more significant patch. And of course, the same can be said on the uh, Tomo River paper here. 
nothing has sort of come through there is show through of course that's the quality of the paper but there is absolutely no bleed uh, and there's clearly no feathering going on on this paper either if we look at it on some lower end paper we just got here a uh, standard copy printer paper you can see the ink through here uh, in the two pens. Uh, the feathering isn't too bad. It actually holds together quite nicely. There's a few spots where it does, uh, but generally I think it looks okay on this paper. The colour is a little sort of uh, more subdued, but that's also, once again, a quality of the paper. If we look at the reverse there, we see that there is some bleed. It's this line through here. Uh, there is a little bit of bleed, particularly where we laid down quite a lot of ink, but generally speaking, I think it performs uh, certainly you know, in comparison to some others, pretty well indeed. And then if we look on even lower quality paper, this is plain student notepad, we see there's a bit more feathering, um, but I've certainly seen worse. Uh, I think the actual colour looks nice. We get a bit more of sort of that dark red on this paper, uh, not so much of the purple in the burgundy. Uh, and on the reverse, there is, as I said, uh, some uh, bleeding happening there, uh, but this is not fountain pen friendly paper, so that is to be expected. For the colour comparisons for this ink, I wanted to pull up sort of a red wine colour. So I got the uh, Rohre und Klinger, uh, Klinger Alt Bordeaux, which is very sort of purple red wine. Uh, and then an ink that a lot of people have been asking for comparisons of this uh, on social media uh, is Diamine Oxblood, uh, which is certainly a more brown red, more blood-like, as opposed to the more red wine of the writer's blood. So a couple of interesting, you know, uh, comparisons on either side of the colour spectrum there. It's time to get down to the nitty-gritty now. Price. Diamine inks are really reasonably priced, and this is part of their standard pricing bottles. This isn't the, uh, you know, the 150th anniversary special ones or the shimmer inks or a specialty set. This comes in under the standard pricing, uh, which in the UK uh, is around the £2.35 for the 30ml or £5.90 for the 80ml. In the US, 750 for the 30 and 14.95 for the 80 and in australia once this ink uh, is retailed here um, currently as i'm filming this i couldn't find an australian retailer that had it in stock uh, but the standard australian at low end pricing for diamine is 8.95 for the 30 and 19.95 for the 80 mil bottles I think the UK definitely uh, gets the best pricing, seeing as though it is a UK uh, company. Okay, score, I've given it four out of five. I really enjoy the colour. It's a pretty good performer all round. A couple of little issues, but some water resistance and a really cool colour, and the fact that uh, it has a community input in this ink makes it very, very interesting. So this was Diamine Writer's Blood, the... Uh, 2021 reddit voted ink i hope you found this video interesting and useful if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that i produce please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below you can find me on instagram or twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring your review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens and your inks, and I'll talk to you soon.